Today we proudly present one of the most ambitious, young, experienced and brilliant surgeons, Dr. Rwanda Molina. He is part of the Baptist team and he joined a couple of years ago uh, South Florida ENOS and Throat Associates. Dr. Molina is specializing in transoral robotic surgery, which is the new approach uh, with treatment of benign and malignant lesions of head and neck. And uh, this is basically the topic of our interview today. Dr. Molina, thank you very much for finding the time for to meet with us. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Dr. Molina, can you please say a couple of words how the transoral trans 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 robotic surgery started and how did you become part of this venue? Sure. Uh, it's important to understand first a little history. Um, uh, first of all, uh, cancers of the ear, nose and throat uh, are not the most common types of cancers, but they have long been a cancer associated with uh, smoking and alcohol use, particularly affecting uh, the tongue, the, the tonsils and the back of the throat. And the way we used to uh, treat patients with these cancers is we had to operate on them and uh, operations that were very involved, very extensive or very long in order to remove uh, the particular area of their mouth or throat that was affected with their cancer and that resulted in uh, prolonged rehabilitation and a prolonged recovery for a lot of our patients. Well, with the advent of uh, technological advancements and a lot of the research uh, done by uh, folks like Dr. Uh, Gregory Weinstein and Bert O'Malley at the University of Pennsylvania, the, the Da Vinci robot was finally uh, FDA approved for the use of management of uh, early head and neck cancers, particularly of the oral pharynx, and that means cancers of the tonsils, cancers of the back of the tongue, and cancers of the uh, supraglottis. Well, with the robot now, we are able to operate on patients in the back of their throat without having to do the original big operations where we had to open people's throat, cut their jaws, uh, move their tongue and structures out of the way. Now, it allowed us to operate on their on their cancers by operating directly through their mouth with very small instruments and cameras and that has resulted in a much faster operation uh, technically a more precise operation and of course from a rehabilitation standpoint uh, better outcomes from our for our patients in terms of pain and swallowing and length of stays in the hospital so it, it's an it's been an evolution of traditional cancer uh, operations which were very long sometimes uh, eight hours ten hours and prolonged weeks of hospitalization and then the transition to laser surgery done through the mouth and now robotic surgery uh, done through the mouth which is what's called transoral robotic surgery um, it's been very exciting times not from uh, the, the surgeon's standpoint but from a patient standpoint uh, the outcomes have been very favorable great Thank you. Uh, the limitations of transoral robotic surgery definitely exist and what do you think would be the limitations? Sure, uh, just because we have a new tool or a new technique doesn't mean that everybody's a candidate. Uh, we take everybody and uh, perform a routine uh, head and neck examinations identifying um, where particularly the, the cancer is located. There are some parts of the body that we just can't get to with the robot. Um, as the cancer gets lower down in the throat, it gets very hard to get access to that part with the robot. And then depending on the size of the cancer, um, when the cancers are too big, uh, that's, that's a contraindication to attempt to remove this with the robot. Those patients uh, should be offered traditional open surgery and or non-surgical management with either radiation and chemotherapy. So, Everybody in our practice and everybody and certainly in my practice, uh, when we're evaluating them for the possibility of candidacy for robotic surgery, uh, gets a good exam in the office or in the operating room to see uh, can we get access to their tumor, um, does their mouth open uh, wide enough, sometimes people's uh, dentition or their teeth uh, prevents us from getting the instrument, sometimes they may have small mouths or big uh, thick necks, short necks that may make it challenging to, uh, to operate with the robot. So we do a thorough examination um, before we, we entertain the possibility of robotic surgery. And then in the operating room, of course, 
Um, we try to select patients that we feel very confident we're going to be able to complete the operation. But uh, in certain situations, if you cannot perform the operation, uh, you can transition to the open approach if needed. Thank you. Uh, can you please say a couple of words about the planning period of time for the surgery? Uh, when I looked at the videos, they really remind us the video game when the doctor sits with the joystick and basically navigates um, the robot to work in the mouth cavity. Yeah, so one of the biggest misconceptions sometimes is that the robot actually does the operation. Uh, the surgeon who is operating the console and operating the robot is the one doing the operation. We're oftentimes assisted uh, by uh, either another surgeon. In my case, I operate uh, with my partner, Dr. Uh, Agustin Arieta. He's another uh, robotic uh, certified surgeon. And we work together as a team. So there's two doctors uh, doing the operation with the one surgeon who's controlling the robot and whatever you do with your hands under the console the robot does that with his hands um, in the patient's mouth and that allows us a wonderful magnification very up close views of the tissues we're able to identify nerves and veins and arteries that maybe otherwise we would have sacrificed and this time we're able to preserve those structures we're also able to very uh, precisely cut tissues because um, the instruments, uh, the magnification allows us to see exactly the difference where the cancer lies and where the tissue that is uninvolved, uh, where those planes lies, we're able to get in those tight spaces. And, um, and the robot really, it, it takes away any doctor tremor, any patient tremor. So operating in these areas, particularly around delicate structures like, like the main arteries in your neck. Um, are now easier and with more confidence we can dissect around those areas. But we're still in the same room. We're not operating from a remote location. We're not operating from home. We're not operating from another place. We're in the same operating room with our patients, only we're not operating next to the patients. We're operating within the console and the patient uh, has the robot um, overlying them with the instruments in the mouth. Um, so it's a, it's fascinating uh, equipment that is uh, certainly uh, allowing patients to get better faster. Thank you. Um, also, I wanted to ask, oh, transoral robotic surgery is becoming more and more popular and uh, as I understood there is a special program training the surgeons, especially ENT surgeons in the University of Pennsylvania? Uh, yes. Um, first, this is, uh, this is a, uh, a, a, a procedure, a tool that is being offered to all doctors who traditionally manage patients with head and neck cancer. So um, in the United States there's a training program. You usually the first thing I would recommend is you contact uh, maybe your local hospital that might have a robot where maybe other physicians like uh, in urology or uh, GYN might be using the robot in other specialties and contacting your local rep uh, with the Da Vinci product, uh, the intuitive rep, and they might be, they, they should be able to put the interested surgeon in the appropriate hands of um, a regionally based uh, hospital where they do training. Uh, where I trained, um, we were already used to doing laser surgery, uh, operating through the mouth to remove cancer, and then it was a simple stepping stone mm -hmm. to then go through. Uh, the protocol of getting certified to use the robot, learning and understanding how the robot works, and then um, getting proctored by Dr. Gregory Weinstein and Dr. Bert O'Malley at the University of Pennsylvania to get our final certification and then coming back down here to South Florida to begin doing our robotic surgery. But if anybody is interested in doing robotic surgery, I would certainly start with their uh, local community hospital and then contacting the, the company of uh, Intuitive, which uh, is the owners and the proprietors of the robot to assist them with uh, how to get into the uh, training protocol. And then, you know, from there, it's just a matter of doing what you feel comfortable doing to manage the head and neck cancer, doc the patients. Great. And can you please say a couple of words about off-label use of uh, transoral robotic surgery, especially uh, there were a few publications about treatment for the sleep apnea. And this is the problem that we see, especially in the dental uh, office setting, we see very often with elderly and obese patients. And we try to uh, give them some non-surgical 
types of treatment which usually fail and um, so this approach with transoral robotic surgery is becoming probably it will be the future so what do you think about that yeah I, I agree I, I mean these are exciting times for that field particularly sleep apnea uh, obstructive sleep apnea is a very common condition it affects a large percentage of our population and uh, and as a surgeon we've uh, been traditionally always uh, trying to address the areas of obstruction in the throat and in the mouth and uh, Surgical options have also sometimes failed, as are our non-surgical options with dental devices. And the robot is an exciting uh, equipment that might be able to uh, deal with those patients who have particularly base of tongue and uh, posterior pharyngeal wall sites of obstruction because we already get there for our cancer patients. Well, for our patients who don't have cancer but have obstructive sleep apnea, and, and those patients are far more prevalent and the incidents are far, far higher of sleep apnea than we have for head and neck cancer. The ability to, to use uh, the robot for management of obstructive sleep apnea is a new avenue that's being explored. There are centers like at the University of Pennsylvania where they are doing a research to see and monitor the outcome of a robotic uh, base of tongue surgery for uh, sleep apnea. Right now, uh, it is still not FDA approved. Uh, if I'm correct, as of today, we still don't have FDA approval for uh, using the robot for a base of tongue obstruction. But of course, it's always um, within you know the patient and the doctor's uh, confidence if they are doing or participating in an IRB study. Um, I think that the robot is a wonderful tool to operate in the back of the tongue compared to what we used to have available to us uh, with endoscopes and, 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 and direct visualization for operating in those areas, which was challenging. The robot makes operations in the back of the tongue far easier. And uh, of course, easier uh, for the surgeon usually translates into uh, better outcomes for the patients when managing their disease. Thank you. Dr. Molina, thank you very much for being with us today. And thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.